The chimeroplasty was already shared in three parts. Part 1, uh, we described the general principles and the types of chimeroplasty. And uh, part 2 uh, explained the approaches and incisions mainly. And uh, part 3 was on mirumoplasty, that was type 1 chimeroplasty. And this, is, this class is on type 2 chimeroplasty. What is type 2 chimeroplasty? It is osiguloplasty. Okay. Type 2 timinoplasty is uh, called osiculoplasty and uh, <clears throat> in this class I will describe about the indications and contraindications of osiculoplasty. The types of osiculoplasty as uh, classified by Austin and also the types of graft materials used with advantages and disadvantages of each type of graft and the postoperative care and also the complications. So, what is this osiculoplasty? It is plasty of the ossicles. So there is meringoplasty, that is plastic repair of the meringus or the tympanic membrane. Like that, if there is a defect in the ossicle, we have to repair it and that is osiculoplasty. This is medullium uh, with the malleus, incus and staves assembly. Okay, this is malleus, incus and staves. So, uh, these ossicles can be either destroyed or they can be fixed. Okay. Destroyed, uh, the cause of destruction or the commonest cause of destruction of the ossicle is called by cholesteatoma or by chronic otitis media. And uh, in cholesteatoma, I already described uh, that the long process of incus is the commonest ossicle eroded by cholesteatoma or by chronic otitis media uh, because of the end arterial blood supply. So, indications we can divide into those caused by destruction of ossicle or those uh, because, uh, the, uh, ossicular defect caused by fixation of ossicle. And of the destruction of ossicle, it is a long process of ingus. This part, it is a long process of ingus which is uh, uh, affected most common. And next comes a stapes superstructure, this part, superstructure. So, what happened? Only there will be a mobile foot plate. Okay. And uh, so the commonest one, then comes the same loss of uh, destruction of the stapes superstructure. The third variety, the malleus ingus and also the stapes superstructure is absent. So that only handle of malleus and a mobile foot plate will be present. So these are the of the indication destruction of ossicle and fixation of ossicle can be either the fixation of stapes foot plate angiolysis of the uh, foot plate of stapes due to autosclerosis or due to tympanosclerosis. Um, and uh, next one is head of malleus, commonest one. Head of malleus, this head of malleus is fixed uh, either uh, because of uh, congenital fixity or again it can be due to tympanosclerosis. So in that condition we have to remove the head of malleus and also the incus and the handle of malleus is attached to the Saves superstructure. Okay, the what? How we do that? I'll describe. And so these are the indication. One is destruction of ossicle, and second indication is fixation of ossicle. And what are the contraindications? The absolute con. There is only one absolute contraindication, and that is the acute infections of the ear. Uh, as in all other cases of tympanoplasty, so acute infection of the ear is an absolute contraindication. And the other relative contraindication cases are one is medical conditions which make the patient unfit for surgery like an uncontrolled diabetes or uncontrolled hypertension like that or uh, uh, cardiac problems. Then uh, repeated osiculoplasty in which in each time there is failure of processes. Then uh, better go for an alternative procedures, alternative options like a hearing aid. To decide on the type of osiculoplasty, it is important to have a uh, classification of the ossicular defect. So, Austin along with the cartouche has given a uh, classification on ossicular defect. He divided that into A to F. Okay. A, B, C, D, E and F. 
So in normal cases, this is malleus M present, incus present and uh, staves superstructure. Okay. And it is also present. Okay. So this is type 0 or a normal year. And in all cases, we consider ossicular defect. Uh, I already told the long cross of ingus is commonly eroded. So for all uh, Austin's classification, this ingus is supposed to be absent. So there is no I. Ingus is absent. So in type A, malice is present. Uh, this ingus is absent in all cases. Right? So M plus means malleus present, head of malleus mainly. S plus means the state's superstructure is present. So in type A, M plus, S plus. Right? Only the incus is absent. And in type B, M plus, S is minus. That is, state's superstructure is absent. So the uh, foot plate is mobile and it is present. Right? And in type C, it is M minus S plus. And type D, malleus uh, absent, staves superstructure absent. So type D will be like this. Okay. Only the handle of malleus and the staves, foot plate or staves will be present. E is ossicular head fixation. Mainly the head of malleus is fixed. And F is staves fixity. Okay. And depending on this, the surgeon can decide on which type of ossicloplasty or which type of process has to be used. And also the surgeon's experience. All these cases, as there is no ossicular coupling, conductive hearing loss is a complaint of the patient. So the treatment should be uh, the aim of surgery is to increase the or improve hearing of the patient. More than the closure of AB gap, it is improvement of hearing, subjective improvement of the hearing or the patient satisfaction. That is the aim of surgery. So in all these cases, um, the missed uh, ossicle has to be replaced. How can we replace that? It is by using graft or using processes. Okay. So as in um, myrmoplasty, here also, we can use different type of graft. I told four types of uh, grafts in case of mergoplasty. But here, we can use an, either an autograft, that is from the same patient, or we can use homograft from uh, another patient, another person, and also we can use alloplast. Alloplast. These two, homograft, autograft and homograft are biological material and these alloplasts are prosthetic, synthetic materials. Okay, so what are the biological materials that can be used? Tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane is very thin, it is fascia-like, so we can uh, use fascia for that. But here, it should be more of rigid, more compact, not easily resorbable. We can use an uh, cortical bone. Or we can use the uh, ossicle itself, especially if the uh, incus is damaged. There is a little bit of erosion of the long process of incus. We can reshape the incus and use. Okay, say incus, reshape incus, incus and also cartilage. These are the common autographs used. And the advantage of these are, Advantage of autograph. Autograph means from the same patient. If I am uh, doing, I am uh, my ear and uh, my own incus or my own cortical bone or my own cartilage is used, it is autographed. Advantages are of uh, autograft are um, fully biocompatible, then uh, less chance of extrusion, uh, easily available and less chance of, there is no chance of infection. And the disadvantages are, one is lack of availability, especially in case of chronic discharging, yes, but because there will be erosion of the entire incus, so the lack of availability. And the second one, uh, if 
presence of cholesteatoma inside the ear. Even if there is a less of erosion of the incus, there is chance of microscopic infiltration of the squamous epithelium into the incus bone and presence of a residual cholesteatoma. So that is a disadvantage. And uh, if we are planning for resizing the incus, it will be there will be delay. There is prolonged operation time. That is uh, that is again a disadvantage. And especially if you are using cartilage, there is chance of resorption and uh, loss of integrity in long run. And also there is chance of uh, fixity, fixation of the uh, ossicle to the middle ear walls. And this uh, homograft, they are not at all preferred nowadays because of the chance of infection, especially HIV and slow virus infection. But even if you are using, uh, the materials used are mainly from uh, a living patient or from a cadaver. Some institutions have got ossicle bank and these ossicles are preser uh, preserved in. 70% uh, alcohol or in a 0.02% aqueous sialic solution or formaldehyde. That percentage of formaldehyde for fixation it is 4% and for preservation it is 0.5%. This is usually asked in viva. Okay, so homograft are preserved. These are the preserving materials. So they can be used either from the bone bank or from cadavers. An ideal graft material should be, it should be biocompatible and it should be safe. It should not transmit infections. In that way it should be safe and it should be easily insertable into the middle ear. And it should be stable, it should stay there, it should be stable and also there should be a maximum gain in uh, sound transmission. Our aim is to get improvement in hearing. So there should be maximum gain. So an ideal um, my uh, material should be biocompatible, it should be safe, it, it should be easily insertable into the middle ear, it should be stable and uh, it should give a maximum gain in sound transmission. So we can divide that uh, alloplastic materials into metals and non-metals. Because these are uh, widely used nowadays also. So you should have a clear knowledge or clear idea of these alloplastic materials. And of the metals we use, uh, what are the metals usually used? One is titanium, gold is there, then uh, stainless steel. Then what platinum or ornaments, platinum, gold, titanium and also silver. Silver also you can use. And there should be a cartilage interface between the uh, process made by this metal and timbering membrane. So you, should, you have to cover the processes with cartilage. Otherwise, extrusion rate will be high. And uh, of the non-metals, we have both uh, polymers and also ceramics. Polymers are again divided into solid and porous uh, depending on the uh, inner particular uh, size. It can be solid and also porous. The solid polymers are used mainly for osculoplasty and there are also porous one like plastipore which is also used. Plastipore. It's, uh, Plastipore is high density polyethylene sponge. Okay. Plastipore and polycell comes in high, HTPS, high density. And this uh, in the solid mainly comes Teflon. Teflon is a dense aluminum oxide uh, material. So that can be used without a cartilage interface. And in all this I told it is to reduce the uh, extrusion rate. It is better to cover with a cartilage uh, piece or a cartilage graft but in Teflon the cartilage interface is not needed. And what about the ceramics? Ceramics we can uh, divide it into bio-inert, bio-active and uh, bio-degradable. Okay, so in the bio-inert Example 
Teflon is also a bio-inert and in bio-inert material there is no need of a cartilage interface between tympanic membrane and the processes. And in bio-reactive They will promote a soft tissue uh, growth into the processes. Mainly comes uh, bioglass and cerevita. So in a bio inert, I told you there is a direct chemical bond. It promotes a soft tissue uh, growth into the processes. And in bio reactive comes uh, bioglass and also the cerevita. And uh, the third type of ceramics. One, two. I will write it here. Third is the most promising. That is biodegradable. That is uh, hydroxyl appetite. Okay. That is the most promising and widely used nowadays. So, in uh, brief, we can divide the alloblastic materials into metals and non-metals. And non metals again into polymers, into solid and porous one, and uh, ceramics to bio inert, bio reactive, and uh, biodegradable. The glues and adhesives like tissue glue and fibrin glue will increase the rate of uh, success of the processes, can be used in condition with this uh, uh, processes. So, the choice of this material depends upon the status of the middle ear ossicle present inside the middle ear and also the experience and the preference of the surgeon. So we described the indications, contraindications, the type of uh, graft materials used and uh, also the types of ossicular defects. Now before surgery there is pre-operative pre pre planning should be there. It was similar to that described in myrgoplasty. The most important uh, investigation is a high resolution CT scan of the temporal bone with uh, 3 mm cuts that is thin slice uh, HRCT temporal bone in both axial and coronal view so that we will get an uh, idea of the presence or absence of cholesteatoma, presence of any other diseases, then extent of the disease, the volume of the middle ear cavity or the depth of the middle ear cavity, the status of each ossicles, whether there is erosion or fixity of the head of malleus there is uh, fixity of the foot plate of stapes etc. So HRCD temporal bone with thin slice cuts in axial and coronal view is the most important investigation. Uh, the ossicloplasty is of two types. It can be primary ossicloplasty or it can be a secondary ossicloplasty. Primary ossicloplasty is the mastoidectomy as well as ossicloplasty done at a single stage. And this secondary is secondary to uh, asteroid exploration that is eradication of disease from the middle ear is done and uh, ossicloplasty is done as a second stage. So they are the, uh, primary and secondary are the types of ossicloplasty and the requirements of uh, ossicloplasty are prerequisites. Mainly there are three prerequisites. The one the middle ear mucosa should be normal or minimal hypertrophied. Normal or minimal hypertrophied middle ear mucosa and the second patent eustachian tube that is very important also for myrgoplasty this is a prerequisite that is the eustachian tube should be functioning normally so as to maintain an adequate middle ear um, air volume and third the foot plate of stapes should be functioning it's a mobile normal foot plate of stapes okay only if the foot plate of stapes is normal then only we can go for an ossicloplasty so these are the three important prerequisites of ossicloplasty. The approach uh, as I described in um, part 2 of timeroplasty, it can be a transcanal uh, approach with the elevation of the timeromatal flap and if you use a shear speculum holder, your both hands will be free also. Shear speculum holder is advocated, advised. Then if the canal is very narrow, a postural approach is also preferred. And if there is difficulty in seeing the anterior recess because of the bulge in the anterior canal, you have to go for a canal plasty also. And about the techniques of different types of ossicloplasty, the first one is M plus S plus, malleus present, stapes present, incus absent. Incus can be completely absent 
or there can be erosion of the uh, parts of incus. And the most commonly affected one is erosion of the ingudo-sapital joint. This part. Okay. This part will be absent. So, we can, in this condition, erosion, if there is only erosion of the ingudo joint, this joint processes can be used. Okay. So, one uh, such one is an, one is a titanium ingudo processes. Okay, and uh, uh, one use is in curse angular processes. Okay. Titanium processes is there. It can be fitted here. And uh, also, another uh, commonly used one is in apple bomb processes. Okay. Uh, it, it, uh, it is having a notch at one end and uh, slit at the other end. It is almost like this. So, if the joint is paired, but there is erosion of part of long process, then bone cement can be used. Okay, the bone cement can be used here to fit it into the uh, stapes superstructure. Bone cement. Okay. In another scenario, when a large part of most of the incus is absent, then what can we do? There are two uh, techniques. One is an PORP, that is partial ossicular replacement processes. Partial ossicular replacement processes okay uh, roughly it is like this this part to connect it with the uh, manubrium or the handle of malleus and at the other end there will be a notch like this to uh, keep it over the head of staples okay so this is a Partial ossicular replacement processes that can be used, or we can uh, sculpture. And uh, another technique is incus sculpturing, or the autograft or the homograft. Uh, incus can be sculptured and it can be reused. And that was mainly described by Pennington. And uh, Pennington uh, used two techniques. One is a vertical malleus stapes uh, assembly. And uh, also there is horizontal malleus to uh, stapes. So in the vertical one, from the handle of malleus, this will go to the head of stapes. This is vertical. And in the horizontal type, this will go from here to the neck. This is horizontal. Okay. Vertical from the handle of malleus to the uh, head of stapes. And uh, horizontal is from handle of malleus to the neck. Okay. So, if we draw like this, this is the... Uh, uh, malleus head and uh, this is the handle of malleus and if it is the head and the neck of stapes the vertical will be like this and the horizontal will be like this ok so these are the two techniques by Pennington and another uh, technique is by Curse. Again, he used a notched incus with a short process or with a long process. Or the sculpturing of the incus and transposing, uh, interposing it between the handle of malleus and the staves. 
by Pennington and also by Wurz. That is the two techniques. Again, uh, each of them divided again into two types. Type B. That is uh, man is present but states superstructure is absent. And again, incus is absent, obviously. So it is like this. So in this case, we can either use a total ossicular replacement process. Okay, total ossicular replacement process. So there is no head of staves. So here there should not be any notching. So a top is like this. Okay. The end difference is at the end. In pork is shorter and also it has got a notch. Whereas the total ossicular replacement processes is longer and like with a there is no notching. That is to fit into the foot plate. Okay. That is one option. And also you can use an inder uh, incus replacement processes. So if only the uh, malleus with there is no uh, superstructure and there is no incus then there is no role for the head of malleus. So if you are using an incus replacement processes ambute the head of malleus and uh, put the incus replacement processes between this. Okay. So what all things you can use here? One you can use an incus replacement processes. Or you can use a titanium uh, processes with a ball joint. Okay. Between this. Or torque. So for type B that is man is present with an absent uh, step superstructure. Either a torque or incus replacement uh, processes or titanium processes with the ball joint can be used. And what if... Uh, Type C, that is malleus absent, ingus absent, and uh, uh, step is superstructure present. So here you have the uh, tympanic membrane. And malleus absent. And in S plus you have the uh, superstructure what is ideal for this ideal one is a porp again this is porp is ideal ok from this to this partial ossicular replacement processes and for type D even the superstructure is absent. Then what can be used? A total ossicular replacement process can be used. Isn't it? Okay. That is TORP. Right? And what if the E is fixation of the head of malleus? You can uh, ambute the uh, head of malleus and a process is between the manubrium to staves. Whether uh, depending on whether the staves superstructure present or absent. A torque or a uh, pop can be used and what if the staves is fixed? The fixation of the foot plate or stape is you can do a classical stepidectomy or a stepidotomy. Right? So these are the techniques of uh, osiculoplasty used and for type A you can use an indus, uh, incus a sculpture in the position or transposition of incus and along with that a pork also can be used and for type B that is M plus S minus again the incus replacement processes or titanium process with, with the ball joint or a torque can be used and for type C you can use a partial ossicular replacement processes and for type D torque and head, if the head of malice is fixed again uh, processes in between after amputing the head of malleus and for step is fixation that is type F of uh, 
Austin classification, we can use a typical stepidectomy or stepidotomy. It is always better to keep a cartilage sheet in between the tympanic membrane and the end of processes, a cartilage cover. For that you can use a single block of cartilage or a double block cartilage can be used. The postoperative care is similar to that of myrmoplasty. I have already explained it along with the timbanoplasty part 3 that is myrmoplasty uh, class like the uh, heavy avoiding of uh, uh, heavy weight lifting then forceful blowing of the uh, nose etc and also avoid entry of water into the ears and the follow up is usually uh, you have to continue the follow up up to 3 years why 3 years because 3 years is a time 1 to 3 years is a time for extrusion of the uh, processes so e after 3 years the chance of extrusion of the process is very very little okay so uh, a very good follow up is a must for the first 3 years after surgery complications are almost similar to that of myrmoplasty like the uh, tear of uh, TM flap then the injury to body tympani now but in addition in osteoplasty you can also get the extrusion of the processes migration of the processes then the middle ear reaction penetration of the uh, process into the inner ear leading to a sensory neural hearing loss etc. So to summarize I explained about the indications of osculoplasty, the contraindications, the type of technique of osculoplasty uh, for each type of uh, ossicular defect, and the types of graft and also the type of process used with its advantages, the postoperative care and also the complications. Thank you.